This is lesson three, I will name numbers within one million. So today there are no first dues. So I want you to know that I want you to, we're gonna go right straight in order from the first problem to the last problem. All right, so let's take a look at our problem set and you'll notice the directions say rewrite the following numbers, including commas where appropriate. I want you to try to do these first five problems all by yourself and then come back and we're going to check together. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you try to do this by yourself. So just remember that the commas go where you have a group of three. So in this case, we would have ones, tens, hundreds, comma. So the comma goes between the one and the two. In B, the comma goes between the two and the three. And in C, the comma goes between the three and the four. So remember, you always have to start with the ones, tens, hundreds, then put your comma. You can't start at the beginning of the number. You have to start at the end and work your way backwards. All right, so let's take a look at D. So in D, you actually had two commas because you had two groups of three. And then in E, you actually had three commas because you had one, two, three groups of three, and then a group of two. All right, so let's take a look at problem number two. Now it says solve each expression. Record your answer in standard form. So if I have five tens plus five tens, that would give me ten tens. But that would not be standard form. So I have to think to myself, if I have ten tens, how much do I have? Well, I have one hundred. So if you look at your place value chart, and you have ones, tens, and hundreds, if you have 10 tens, then you can bundle these together to make 100. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. So I've got 300s and 700s. So 3 plus 7 would equal 10. So I'd have 10 hundreds. Well, if I have 10 in the hundreds place, I can bundle it and move it to the left. So what would be to the left of the hundreds? Thousands. So this would be 1,000. 400,000 plus 600,000. So 400 and 600 would be equal to 1,000. So if I had 1,000 thousands, so let's think about this. I'm going to have to need a place value chart to look at this one. So I've got 1s, 10s, hundreds, and then I have my thousands. Well, I have a thousand thousands. So if I've got ten thousands, and then over here, I've got a hundred thousands. Well, I don't have a thousand thousands because what comes after a hundred thousands? This would be a million, right? So if I had a thousand thousands, so think about that. How many hundred thousands would that be? Well, let's try this. Here's my thousand, so I'm going to put a thousand in here. So here would be ten. Now I have a thousand in the thousands place. So that means I have ten hundred thousands. So I could bundle these 10 and make 1 million. Last, I have 8,000s plus 4,000s. So that will be equal to 12,000s. So now if I had 12,000s, what would that look like? Well, that would be one ten thousand and two thousands. So here's my twelve thousands. Okay, all right, let's take a look at number three. Represent each add in with place value disk in the place value chart. Show the composition of larger units from ten smaller units. Write the sum in standard form. All right, so let's start by representing 4,000s with place value disk. So I've got 4,000s, so that would be 1, 2, 
three, four. And then I have 11 hundredths, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Do you see anywhere that we could bundle and make a larger unit? Well, here's a group of ten, right? So if I have a group of ten hundredths, I could bundle this and make another thousand. So now instead of having four thousands and eleven hundredths, I have five thousands, this has been used, and one hundred. So how do I write five thousand one hundred? Well, I put a five in the thousands place, a one in the hundreds place, I have no tens and no ones. Moving right along. Now let's take a look at B. So now we have 24 ten thousands and eleven thousands. I'm going to pause the video. I want you to put 24 ten thousands and eleven thousands in the place value chart. And I want you to try to bundle together any groups of ten that you can, and then we'll come back and see if we have the same answer. Okay, so I have my 24 ten thousands and I have my eleven thousands. So I noticed that in 24, I could bundle two groups of 10 and move them to the 100 thousands. So now I have 200 thousands. I'm going to go ahead and mark these out so I know I've already used them. And then I could bundle one group of 10 thousands and make another 10 thousand. So now, how do we write this new number? So now I have 200 thousands. I have five 10 thousands, 1,000, no hundreds, no tens, no ones. So I'll write it like this. 251 thousands, and nothing else. All right, let's take a look at number four. Use digits or disk on the place value chart to represent the following equations. Write the product in standard form. Well, I think this time I'm going to go with digits because digits are a little bit faster than disk, and I think I can still tell what I'm doing. So I've got 10 times 3 thousands. So I'm going to come to the thousands and I'm going to put the digit 3 here. So now if I multiply this times 10, I've learned that when I multiply times 10, I'm moving that digit to the left. So now I would have 3 ten thousands. Okay, so now I have 3 ten thousands. So it says to write the product in standard form. So if I have 3 ten thousands, now I have no thousands, no hundreds, no tens, and no ones. So I would write that like this. Three, and I have four zeros. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to group three together and put my comma. So it says how many thousands are in this answer? Well, this is my thousands right here. Everything in this place that ends in thousands. So I have thousands, thousands, thousands. Well, right here, I have 30. So I have 30 thousands in this answer. If I had had 100,000 here, then my answer would have been 130 thousands. If this had been a 4, it would have been 430 thousands. But I didn't have anything in the 100 thousands, so it's just 30 thousands. Okay, let's try one more. So we've got three ten thousands, so let's put a three in the ten thousands, and we have two thousands. Now I want you to pause the video and see if you can't do this by yourself. See if you can represent multiplying it by 10 and see if you can figure out what that is in standard form and how many thousands. If you sit there and you think about it for a couple of minutes and you don't know where to begin, you can always press play and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so first of all, I multiply the three ten thousands times ten, and that moved it to the hundred thousands. I multiply the two thousands times ten, and that moved it to the ten thousands. So now I have zero in all of these other places. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six digits. So it's three hundred twenty thousand. So how many thousands are in this answer? So again, these are my thousands. So what number do I have in the thousands place? I have 320, so I have 320 thousands. All right, one more. I want you to see if you can do this one all by yourself. So I'm going to pause the video again, and let's see how much of this you can do all by yourself. Again, if you get stuck, you can always press play. 
Okay, this one started out a little bit tricky because it said 32 thousands. So 32 thousands, if I put 32 in the thousands place, I could bundle 30 of those thousands and make them 10 thousands. So I just went ahead and put my three in the 10 thousands because I knew that was 30 thousands. Then when I multiplied it by 10, it became easy because I knew I was just moving every digit to the left. And now if I'm gonna write this in standard form, I have no hundreds and no ones. So I would write this 321,040. So how many thousands are there? Well, these are the digits that are in my thousands place. So I have 321 thousands. Okay, let's take a look at number five. So we are going to use the RDWW process anytime we see an application problem. So Lee and Gary visited South Korea. They exchanged their dollars for South Korean bills. Lee received 15 10,000 South Korean bills and Gary received 150,000 bills. Use disk or numbers on a place value chart to compare Lee and Gary's money. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a place value chart here. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. So I'm going to go ahead and just label this um, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and then I've got ten thousands, hundred thousands, oops, that's an N and then millions. So let's start with Lee. I'm going to label this Lee. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to think I'm just going to go ahead and divide my place value chart in two parts like this so I don't get Lee and Gary confused. All right, and then this will be Gary. All right, so Lee has 15 10,000 bills. So I could put 15 in here, but I already know that if I have 15, that's the same as 10 plus 5. So I already know I could bundle a group of 10, 10 thousands, and that would go to the 100 thousands. So this would be my 15, 10 thousand bills. And then Gary received 150 thousand bills. So if I put 150 here, these are my thousands. So he has 150. So that would be 100, five tens, and zero thousands. And then if I go ahead and put zeros in all the rest of these, I can have their number in standard form. Now it says to compare their money. Well, what do you notice? Do you notice that they are the same? So I'm going to go ahead and write here my number sentence. So I'm going to write 15 10 thousands is equal to 150 thousands. That's my number sentence. Now I'm going to write a word sentence. Lee and Gary have the same amount of Korean money. So they have different bills, but they have the same value. So today we learned about building numbers to the millions place, and we talked a lot about place value. We will continue this in lesson four.